Hey, what's going on, guys and girls? Can you see that? Here, let me go like that so you can read that. It'll be pertinent here in a moment. Let me try to get things focused back in here again. All right, the rest of it, I'll, t I'll tell you what it is. And Ryan, thanks. I think I'll be able to mount that camera here and flip it down and still have my view up and it won't be in the way. Thanks, man. We'll be looking into that. All right, uh, I did a video yesterday. Actually, it was like this morning. <clears throat> and a friend called me. He had no idea I was doing a video. Hey, <laughs> Scott. And it interrupted me and I forgot part of the, the video or parts of the video that I want to I wanted to include. So I'm gonna do that now. <clears throat> what can I call it? Noise, cheap parts, frequency response. I'll title it something. Same radio. Okay. It is straight at nine. It's the angle that you're looking at it, and I'm not gonna bust my coax on my wiring in the back. Normally the radios are just sitting over here when I work on them, pointing to the right. I don't have them pointing upside down. The knobs actually point that way. For the sake of any arguments, let's remove this. That's a volt ohm meter. Let's go like this. Okay. Half a mega ohm. Plug this back in when I'm looking at it. There we go. All right, and then we're going to test this one. All right. Yes, your other two are done. And you know what I have to do with this. Yes, I'm behind, guys and girls. Maintenance, work, repairs, new re well, just bear with me, okay? All right. K. This is something that I wanted to show in the last video, but I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm going to say the numbers out. You can click on it, because I don't want to keep listening to that noise. It really does. It gets into my head with like a screwdriver, you know what I mean? What you hear? That's nine, oh, 900, 800, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one, and zero. All right. Our gains wide open. Yeah, this one's done. Now let's go a little bit higher. That's seventeen. Twenty-seven. Let me go a bit slower so you can see that there's a natural curve. Shut this channel off. That's 3,500. Most specs go by, what is it, 500 to 3,000. There's a reason for that. That's 5,500, 5,000. 4,000, let me shut the noise off so we're talking at the same time. Not all frequencies have the same amplitude. And your human, the human ear is different. Just like this volume contour. Okay, this isn't a linear taper pot, it's audio taper pot. Halfway is not halfway on this style of radio. Then there's other radios where there's actually a tone con contour or control on the back of the pile, you know, a dual gang, you know, a double pole. They're different in how they work. And the, the, most of the radios that you and I see, they're just like this. Audio taper, this is a 10 and 50 K-pop with a squelch. But it's not easy to explain quickly. What you see in amplitude here is not necessarily what your ear hears. 
different wavelengths, even when it's mechanical, like moving air, it takes more air to move a lower frequency than a higher frequency sound. It takes less air. It travels easy. And then that can get mixed up with other sounds or lost in other sounds. And I'm going to try to explain that with this next radio. Alright, so you see it? Something else is the receivers and the transmitters might appear to be the same frequency response. But in all reality, they're not. They're tuned pretty much like that out of the factory, but if you would take a radio up to 5K with an amplitude of 100% modulation, you'd be splattering like five channels. All right? So there's a lot to this give and take to get all the power or the mean power, the arithmetic mean to be over the antenna, across the airwaves into another antenna. All right, this is this radio. Let's bring it back down to, say, 1K. We're back at 1K. You can tell by the scope. All right? Remember where we started? Hook up the other one. These are cool little radios. Very similar to the Lincoln and the Anytone. Sold, we sold some of those, these back in the day. The only thing I didn't like about it is the knob stick out. See how far they stick out? I deal with a lot of mobile people, especially truck drivers. This thing flops out of the case or the cubby hole, whacks the knobs. Bad voodoo. All right. Number one, I don't know what's been done to this radio, if anything. I have no idea yet. I'll know in the net today or tomorrow. Clarifier. I'll get to that in a second. I did test that. We're over 9 at 67 dB down, or dBm down, right? It shouldn't be that high. And say for instance, the sideband. Yeah, it's, it's off frequency. Okay. Some of you guys like that? Yeah. We haven't even touched sideband yet, so just keep staying tuned in. Click that subscribe button. All right, can you see that? Let me zoom in a little bit. See all the noise in it? At 100 millivolt injection. Let me see the volume now. Focus on that, let me get back out of here. Arc squelches off. Arc gains wide open. You can see. Why don't you hear it again? And you can hear the noise. This is typical. It's a typical thing. I do have some more ideas to simulate the exact world type of scenarios here. Maybe that will help some to catch on a little bit faster. Okay, now, here we are. One k tone, let's drop it down. Can you see the noise now? It's riding on the signal. And off, you heard it beep. Okay. Spectrum analyzer off. That's 2K. 3500. That's 4500. 5K. See the noise in it? 
what I see and what I hear, the noise is damn near as just as loud as at higher frequency. I would say that this radio really needs to kill the tone in alignment back to 1k and uh, if you were to go back to say 1978 and purchase or obtain every single radio manual available to like almost to date and read them yeah some people have done that and study the schematics and then after you study the schematics, study the components from the past to present and wonder why some people went out of business. Because you know why? Here's just a part of it. A disc capacitor, 0 0.003 cents. Polystyrene might cost you 68. Now that's as far as I'm going to go on that topic. But also... There you go. The re I say the receiver of this radio is making some of its own inherent noise. There's no noise in my lines. Okay, I just tried to show you that. All the audio lines in here now are nothing but RG58CU. Stranded, you know, multi strand coax. I just showed you the resistance. The service monitor naturally, all by itself, there's a setting on, up in here on the impedance that it needs to be set at, which is 8 ohms. Will the impedance change things slightly as I add 8 ohms? It does. And I'm going to load the speaker in the future, but is it making any measurement change? Absolutely not. It does when you see it here. But what you hear, even though the amplitude changes that much, it's not changing the tune of anything. So getting back to specific components and alignments, can you see it now? See, the, the ambient noise or like noise floor in the atmosphere at higher frequencies can actually do this. And you're not going to hear it as good. Remember the other radios, and I'll be showing a lot more in the future. Just in when they come in, when they go out, you know I don't do the output or I don't do the tune-up report stuff, but this is what I do. When I do a radio and show it, that's what your radio is going to be like. Unless you get a phone call and say this thing's foobart or whatever we arrange. Okay. So the noise in the atmosphere will get on your signal and right on your signal. It could actually be in the radio itself doing that. All right, I gotta get to work. I hope uh, you guys got something out of this. You all have a great evening. It's hard drive here at fine-tunedcbshop.com. Take care. Click, click. Damn button. <laughs>